going to show you that the modern Bible perversions actually attack the Godhead and attack the nature of the Godhead. Let me show you 1 John 5, 7 in the King James Bible, the Word of God. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But in the NIV, it says, For there are three that testify. No mention of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the New American Standard Bible, just like the NIV, it says, For there are three that testify. In the New Living Translation, it says, So we have these three witnesses. Again, no mention of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in the English Standard Version, it says, For, the, for there are three that testify. I mean, again, it's attacking the nature of the Godhead. The King James says, For there are three that bear a record in heaven, and it mentions the three, the Father, the Word, in reference to Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. The modern version just says there are three that testify. In Luke chapter 2, verse 38, Adam is called the Son of God. Also throughout the Bible, believers are called sons of God. However, in John chapter 3, verse 16 in the King James Bible, Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God, making a distinction between Jesus, who is the divine Son of God, and Adam, who is just a Son of God, a creation of God, and also believers who are sons of God through Jesus Christ. However, the modern versions actually remove the word begotten, thereby removing that distinction. In John 3.16 in the Revised Standard Version, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In the New Life Version, NLV, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever puts his trust in God's Son will not be lost, but will have life that lasts forever. In the NIV, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So they remove the word begotten. So there's no distinction between Adam, who is a created being, but called the Son of God, and Jesus, who is the divine Son of God, who has no beginning. It removes that distinction, thereby attacking the nature and deity of Christ and nature of God. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, the Bible gives us a test on how to tell who has the spirit of Antichrist and who has the spirit of God inside of them. And the King James reads as follows. Verse 2, Hereby know ye the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, where if you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Someone who has the spirit of God will confess that Jesus Christ is come, present tense. However, what do the modern versions say? The ESV says, By this you know the spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. The NIV says, This is how you can recognize the spirit of God, Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. The RSV says the same thing. It says Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. They don't pass the spirit of Antichrist challenge. They are of the spirit of Antichrist. These modern Bible versions limit Jesus Christ to being has come, past tense, like Muhammad, like Buddha, like Confucius. They all have come in the past. Jesus Christ is come. These modern Bible versions attack that and thereby prove they are of the spirit of Antichrist. The modern Bibles teach Roman Catholic doctrine with regards to Mary and what they claim is her perpetual virginity. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 25 in the King James Bible, it says, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. We see that, that Jesus is called her firstborn son. And the Catholics, that flies in the face of the perpetual virginity because how can she be a virgin her whole life if Jesus is her firstborn son? That implies she had children after Jesus. However, the modern versions remove this distinction. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 25 in the NIV, it says, But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. In the New Life version, it says, But he did not have her as a husband, or as a husband has a wife, until she gave birth to a son. In the English Standard Version, it says, But knew her not until she had given birth to a son. In the New American Standard Bible, it says, 
but kept her aversion until she gave birth to a son. So it removes the distinction between firstborn and just, you know, a son. Because Catholics, they can take that and say, see, she was called, he was called a son, but it doesn't mean he was his firstborn son. So there, she can be a virgin her whole life. You see how the modern Bibles can, can twist this and make it seem like that Mary was a perpetual virgin her whole life. And thus creating this Catholic heresy of the perpetual virginity. She had other children after Jesus. But these modern Bibles remove the word firstborn and make it seem like she was a virgin her whole life because Jesus was a son, but he was not her firstborn son, which would indicate she had other children. So they teach Roman Catholic doctrine with, with regards to the perpetual virginity. Another heresy of the modern Bible versions that is taught by the Catholic Church is beating yourself. The Catholic Church believes you have to beat yourself, that you're co-sufferers with Christ. And you get this in the modern Bible versions, but the King James in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So you're keeping your body under subjection, you keep under your body. You don't beat your body. But the uh, NIV says, No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. So you're striking a blow to your body. In the New American Standard Bible, it says, But I discipline my body and make it my slave. In the New Revised Standard Version, it says, But I punish my body and enslave it. In the Revised Standard Version, it says, But I pummel my body and subdue it. And you say, well, Catholics don't beat their bodies. Yes, they do. Just go on YouTube, search up Catholics beating themselves. Beating your body is a Roman Catholic doctrine because they believe they're co-sufferers co with Christ. So they beat themselves. They beat themselves because they think they're suffering with Christ and you know enduring to the end and that kind of stuff. And the modern Bibles teach this thing of beating yourself and, and it's Roman Catholic, just like the perpetual virginity. It's a Roman Catholic doctrine taught in the modern Bible versions. And there are many others too that are taught in the modern Bibles that are directly out of Roman Catholicism because many of these modern Bible versions come from the Catholic Church because they want to insert their heresies into the modern Bibles. That's why you need a King James because it makes a distinction between biblical doctrine and Roman Catholic heresies like beating yourself. The reason why the King James Bible is so important is because it is the Word of God in English. There are other Bibles that are in other languages, but if you're an English speaker, the King James Bible is the Word of God. You know, no Bible on earth has ever seen the amount of revival and seen the amount of fruit that the King James Bible has ever produced. Because it was not just not just another book, it's not just another translation, it is it was given to us by the by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was working through the translators. I'm not talking about like, you know, uh, double inspiration or that kind of stuff. I believe that the Holy Spirit was leading the translators because, you know, the Catholic Church was suppressing the Bible, was suppressing the Word of God, and the only Bibles they allowed were just corrupted texts that preach a Roman Catholic doctrine. The King James Bible, when it was released um, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, it brought so much fruit, it brought revival to England. Uh, when the King James Bible was brought over to America, it uh, had all kinds of revivals. Again, no Bible on earth has ever seen the amount of revival that the King James has. These modern Bible versions are just a butter knife compared to the two-edged sword of the King James Bible. So don't be sucked into these modern versions. They're from the Vatican. They teach all kinds of, of Catholic heresies, all kinds of a false gospel, workspace gospel. They attack the deity of Christ. They fail the spirit of Antichrist challenge. Don't be deceived by these modern versions. Get yourself the King James Bible and learn from it because it is the word of God in English. It is a, um, I won't, I'm not going to say double inspiration because I don't believe in that, but it was given to us by God. God was behind the translation of it. So, yeah, don't be deceived by these modern versions. God bless you. I hope this was, I hope this was edifying. I hope this you know, helped you learn a thing or two. God bless you. Goodbye.